When I first started digging into machine learning and seeing all these cool demos like speech recognition, my first thought was, that's great, but how do I add my own words? For deep learning, you often need to have hundreds or thousands of samples per category in order to create a robust model. For speech, you can just have different people submit snippets of their voice. But for other types of data, that might mean getting our hands dirty with sensors. A sensor is an electrical device that converts a physical phenomenon into some kind of electrical information. For example, this accelerometer measures acceleration in the X, Y, and Z axes. Let's say we want to train a neural network to recognize different types of gestures because we're making a magic wand. We'd first need to collect a lot of different examples of each type of gesture we want the system to recognize. Because sensors all work a bit differently, I recommend trying to collect data on something that's as close as possible to the sensor you plan to go live with. You don't need to, but it can make things easier. In many machine learning demos that you come across, you'll often find that data has already been collected and labeled for you. For example, in the Raspberry Pi speech recognition videos, we just downloaded the Google Speech Commands dataset and used one of the words in that as our wake word. But for many real machine learning projects, you'll often need to collect your own data. The process of gathering sensor data on a host computer is known as data acquisition, and often abbreviated DAQ, or DAC. DAC devices talk to a sensor and provide raw or interpreted data back to a computer over something like USB. In the past, these devices were often quite expensive, costing hundreds or thousands of dollars. The good news is that we can do this pretty cheaply these days. One way to collect sensor data is by using an Arduino and writing your own quick firmware that reads raw sensor data and sends it back to your computer over a USB cable. Another more professional option is to get a host adapter like this Bino Nova. If you're using a common sensor, like this MSA301 accelerometer, you can use community-written libraries to talk to it. Both the Arduino and Bino Nova options will let you do that. Some sensors, like this older ADXL335 accelerometer, use analog voltage to denote sensor values. Reading from these is just a matter of sampling the voltage with an analog-to-digital converter and doing some math to get the measurement. Most new digital sensors rely on a digital communication protocol like I2C or SPI. Most Arduino boards and the Bino Nova have analog to digital converters as well as support for the various popular digital communication protocols. Note that if you're not using a popular sensor, you might have to write the firmware yourself to read from the sensor and convert the raw reading to a useful measurement value. Let's start with the Arduino. Most basic Arduino boards can be had for cheap, and there's plenty of open source examples out there to get you started reading from sensors. We'll start by writing a quick Arduino sketch that reads data from the accelerometer and then sends out that data over the serial port. We'll then write a Python script in Jupyter Notebook that reads the data from the serial port in two second bursts, combines the readings into a NumPy array, and then saves that array as a file on our computer for later use. I'll connect the accelerometer to the Arduino's I2C port using some jumper wires. Because this is an Adafruit board, we can use the Adafruit MSA301 and Bus I.O. libraries to control it. By looking at the example code provided by Adafruit, we can see that we need to initialize the serial port first, which I'll put at 250 kHz to make it as fast as possible for this board. Then, we initialize the accelerometer using the Adafruit library. The default settings on the accelerometer should be good enough for our needs. We'll actually want to sample slightly slower than the sensor update rate in our Python program so we don't get duplicate data. In our loop, we'll want to have the Python program control the reading, so we make it synchronous by having it wait for the character R to appear on the serial lines. Then, we get a new accelerometer reading and pass the X, Y, and Z acceleration measurements back to the Python program. Note the order of X, Y, and Z and that we're separating them by a tab character. Each sample will terminate with a new line as well. Let's upload the sketch to the Arduino board. If you open the serial monitor and enter R, you should see the X, Y, and Z measurements printed out. While you can do this next part in a regular Python script, I really enjoy working in Jupyter Notebook as it allows you to execute chunks of code individually in cells. First, let's install the Pi serial package as that will allow us to communicate with the Arduino board. We'll need to import PySerial, known as Serial, and NumPy. We can also import matplotlib if we'd like to plot some of the raw data to examine it. Next, let's define a few settings. We'll need to know which serial port the Arduino is attached to. 
I recommend looking at the Arduino IDE. Since I'm on Windows, this will be a COM port. Then, we'll need to match the baud rate we defined in the Arduino sketch. Let's say we're making a magic wand project that classifies different gestures. I'll start with circle as the first gesture. You'll want to run this script multiple times, each time capturing a new gesture. Next, I'll define the number of samples that we should capture for this particular label. In reality, this should be at least a few hundred or thousand samples in each label category. Since I don't want to bore you with this video, I'll only do 10. I'll make sure each sample is about 2 seconds long and that we read from the Arduino 100 times per second, which gives us 200 measurements in each sample. Let's test the serial port by opening it, writing out the character R, and reading a line. Note that some Arduino boards, like the Uno, reset when a serial connection is opened, so we need to wait briefly before using it. Then, let's define a function that captures a number of samples from the serial port and returns them as an array. Note that we're getting three measurements in each reading, one for X, one for Y, and one for Z. As a result, each sample will contain a two-dimensional array. To get the measurements, we send out an R on the serial port and use the readLine function. This works because we're sending the new line characters at the end of each reading from the Arduino. We then need to decode the byte array in Python, strip out the new line characters, and split the resulting string with a tab delimiter. After that, we convert each of these strings into a floating point number and save it in our array of samples. We then want to wait until we're ready to sample again so that we take close to 100 measurements each second. One call of this function constitutes a sample for machine learning purposes. It gathers data for about two seconds. We then create a for loop that captures multiple two-second samples using this function. We use the input function to let the user control when to begin the capture process. Each two-second sample is then added to the array of all samples for this class. When we run the cell, it will wait for us to press the Enter key. Once I press it, I will then have two seconds to perform the gesture. So, I press Enter and draw a circle in the air with the accelerometer. I then repeat this process over and over again until I've collected all of my samples. Once we've captured all of our samples for this label, we can save the data. But first, it might be helpful to plot a few of the samples to see what the raw data looks like. I'll use PyPlot to draw the first five samples from this set. As you can see, the X, Y, and Z axes seem to always follow similar patterns. Because I held the wand face up the whole time, the model will be trained to look for that. As a result, I recommend gathering hundreds of examples for each gesture with the wand in different orientations. Now, we can just use NumPy to save the array as a file to our computer. I'll leave the file name as the label, and NumPy will automatically append .npy. Just to test, I can load the file and print out the data to prove that it saved correctly. Remember that you'll need to run this script again to compute the data for each category you wish to recognize. Using an Arduino is a cheap and easy way to get raw data for many sensors. It does mean you need to write a little C code, though. Using a professional tool like this, Host Adapter, can many times offer greater read speeds, and it lets you do everything from Python. A host adapter's primary purpose is to help you debug digital protocols from your computer. If you're using a microcontroller to talk to a sensor, you could use something like a logic analyzer to debug the communication. However, if you don't want to write firmware, you can use a host adapter to read and write commands to the sensor directly from your computer. The good news is that we can script the host adapter in Python to do raw reads and writes over the communication bus. Even better, we can use Adafruit Circuit Python to handle the communications for us. To start, I'm going to connect the accelerometer to the host adapter's I2C port and give it some power. In Anaconda, or whichever terminal you're using, you'll need to set an environment variable to tell Blinka to use the Nova as our connected board. I'll use the set command since I'm on Windows. It might be different for you. From there, start Jupyter Notebook. You'll need to install the Bino host adapter and Blinka libraries along with whatever packages are necessary for your sensor. We'll need to import board, bus I.O., and the sensor packages along with NumPy, matplotlib, and time. Then we'll create some settings just like in the Arduino example. I'll capture a different gesture this time. Note that CircuitPython with the Bino device seems to result in slower I2C times than with the Arduino example, so we can only do about 25 samples per second. Since this is a relatively new device, hopefully this will speed up in the future. But you can also do raw reads and writes more quickly if you don't want to use community libraries. 
To work with the Bino device, we'll tell it to communicate over I squared C and then pass that object into the sensor's constructor. If we read from the accelerometer, we see that we get a tuple containing the x, y, and z acceleration data in meters per second squared. So we need to divide by the acceleration of gravity if we want to store the numbers as g-force. We can also time how long this operation takes, and we see that it's about 40 milliseconds. This is fine when you don't need measurements very quickly, like with temperature sensors, but might be problematic for things like accelerometers. We'll then create another function that reads a bunch of samples for the desired length of time and returns them as an array. This next cell is very similar to the Arduino example. We'll just have the user make the gestures with the accelerometer board. Just like before, I need to press enter and then draw the gesture in the air. I'm going to do a down up shape this time. I'm going to keep doing this over and over again until I collect all of my samples. Now that we've captured all of the samples, we can plot a few of them. You can see how the z and x axes make distinct shapes each time I move the accelerometer. Then we just save the array as a file. This will be saved as down-up.npy. We can then load it to make sure it was saved correctly. I hope this has given you a few ideas on how to get started collecting raw data for your next machine learning project. Please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and happy hacking! <laughs>